Yeah, can you hear me? All right. Have we started? Yes, we have. Oh, we're right into it. What's yeah. up? Not much. Um, thanks for coming on. So, you know, I want to talk to you a lot about like normal Kendama and you as a player, uh, because you're obviously inspirational to the community, but also to me. But I think we should start with EKC, right? And then we can kind of move on. Yeah, to it's, it's going to be a large chunk. <laughs> yeah. It's um, all, all I can think about all I've been doing. So yeah. I have a lot. I got to gotta sneak in some, some questions at the end, though. Yeah, you have to. And please, we have stuff that we can tell the people. I'm not sure when this will come out because everything's happening so fast with the release of information for the actual event. But I'm I'm down to talk about it as if it's already come out and you can post it before and the people okay. who watch this will get it. And if they yeah. don't, they're missing out because they're not watching your podcast. <laughs> so, you know, as somebody who hasn't been to a European major event, I think maybe you have a lot of info, right? That you can just kind of talk about, but maybe I'll hit a few of the questions and then we can kind of go from there. Be like yeah. the, the first question that I have is... E, like the Euro European Kendama Championship, it was a different thing. It felt like before. Um, yeah, there's a history of it. There's a history. You want to just go through yeah. the history? Yeah, I can. I can give you a quick rendition of it. Yeah, as far as I know, because I haven't been involved with it for that long. But basically, as far as I know, there's been a major European event, and originally it was called the EKO, yeah. European Kendama Open. And that was linked to the IJC, International Juggling Convention. Mm -hmm. And it was run by European Kendama players as a Kendama event within a juggling convention. Mm -hmm. And it had competitive like formats. I think it had open, speed ladder, and freestyle. So somewhat the same. I'm not sure about exactly what, when, but I know that it started early 2010s even it's a very old event the eko okay um, like for example they had it in toulouse in france they've had it in copenhagen they've had it in where they've followed the ijc except for copenhagen but like um they had it in poland uh and then one year they had it in romania which was the last year and that's where for example like players like Tiblex and the Romanian players started making an appearance onto like people's radars was I think around that event was was a moment that was like pretty important but yeah it was EKO it was run by a group of I think actually predominantly British players so the yeah. void if you've ever heard of him, yeah definitely you have to have heard of him I think he was instrumental in it I'm actually not sure who created EKO but I'm sure I, I know some of the people who were in it. There was a guy called Jakub who was Czech later on. And then Maiko, who runs Project Arc and who okay. ran the BKO before. And so all these players, so it was player run, no companies um, involved at the head of it. And that ended in 2018. So I believe an exterior group bought the event, EKC. And that exterior group, or EKO, I mean, sorry, that exterior group basically didn't have much to do with Kanama, and it just fell off. Okay. And then when Chrome heard about this in 2019, Chrome was like, damn, we need an event for the community. And so they made EKC in 2019. So essentially, they just changed the letter, but okay. it was the same principle of... European big event. Yeah, it's imagine NAKO... Yeah. suddenly changes hands and Soul Kanama hears about it and they're like, damn, yeah. uh, we got to make NAKC. Yeah. And then that happens. So that's what happened with EKC. And then more recent history is uh, 2020, Chrome announced EKC, but COVID happened. Yeah. Uh, during that time, for example, NAKO and KWC and Catch and Flow was online. Yeah. Uh, and it continued being online. And then 2021, once again, no EKC. And so by this point, some of the European players are like, damn, like what's happening? Um, yeah. Does Chrome need help with this? It, predominantly me at yeah. this point, I was like, are they good? Like, do, do they still want to do this? I was a bit worried. And then beginning of 2022, I'm talking to Jake about this, Weens, and 
Um, he just, he, 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 we're talking about me doing an event randomly. And he's like, dude, just hit up Chrome and <laughs> like, see what, the, what's going on. And so I hit up Rolf who was working for Chrome at the time and TK. And I was just like, yo, like, what are you guys planning on doing this? this year and they're saying no in 2022 yeah when stuff started yeah, opening dude. up again yeah and it was like february yeah so it was early it was like it was like early in the year and i thought they would have announced it and then they hadn't announced it and then five days later i'd pitch them like my plan i just said listen for this year give me the reins yeah um i want to do this i know you guys want to see it happen but you have other stuff going on because you're a giant company who is developing kendamas in different ways. Yeah. And I I like Wanna respected that and I understood it. And I was yeah. like, you guys need maybe a different person to take care of it. And so <laughs> within five months, I had to throw like uh Europe's major event that happened happen that hadn't happened for three years. And the I think eight or nine previous years before that, it had happened every year consistently. So mm. it was like a three year hiatus of no NAKO for yeah. Europe, Not even online, nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, by that point, we were like, a, like there's just a bunch of new players that we have to like. And the so, event does so much for the community, you know? Like, yeah, it, it's the lifeblood of the community. Because if yeah. we don't have person stuff and if we don't have, something to congregate around like an event you just you're yeah. just not going to see like the kind of boom you see after events like yeah. the connection that you make with people the cultural richness like yeah. petition fuels like some parts of our like sports culture because that's yeah. what we are we are sports culture so we yeah. have to feel it and so having events is major it's yeah. it's 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 essential like there is no way around it so yeah so i saw the necessity for it and within five months what happened last year happened yeah. and then after that i think it after talking to tk about it and seeing that they were so like absorbed by what they had to do i think we came to like this this agreement where basically i was i was going to do it again this year and yeah i i think it's a win for for everyone because i i really feel like we got something really special going on yeah. like and you see it because you're coming i'm so excited for you to see it it's going to yeah. be less than two months away now so last year i think the people who didn't go the americans you know it felt like a oh, european event yeah it's really big it's definitely being organized well um you know i uh and then the video comes out of was it was it wyatt performing or is that or was it Wyatt winning? Or is that oh, a different... Okay, okay. So last year... Um, uh, Nick, Nick versus Alex. Alex Stoll in the final. So that's when I and probably the Americans who didn't go felt FOMO because this event looks super sick and big. And of course, I knew people Just who were going... Finals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was crazy. And there was a whole stream around it as well. But Yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, from the stream, you see some, but when you see like a nicely shot video, yeah, it's going to do something different to you. How big yeah. was that event in 22? Uh, we had, I think, like a cumulative number, like over the weekend, 350 people coming. So okay. it's like if Battle the Border had 450, 500, that's yeah. we're close enough. And this year, I'm expecting 20% like rise in yeah. attendance so i think this year we'll have over 400 is that i feel like nako is probably around battle maybe a little bigger in terms of I'm attendance really not sure yeah you know because i had a conversation with uh cody and chad and uh battle the border at 300 people registered to compete yeah that's huge and that might be a record like i think even more than naco 2022 i have no idea exactly but i think like it was definitely like the same people came right to both events yeah and i i can't really tell which one felt bigger because we were with the people at naco like continuously yeah it it uh, battle of the border felt ridiculously big. It did. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously it's a closed space and there's one room, but I mean that crowd going in, if you remember, into battle was like oh, a yeah. crowd. 
yeah. it looked yeah. like the biggest. I and I think three hundred pre-registered players is it's ridiculous. Huge. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's like, yeah. And EKC last year, the numbers were like we had eighty-five people. Like at EKC, less people compete. Yeah. In Europe, I I've noticed because we have numbers that aren't too far off, but like competitively, we have maybe we had eighty-five people in freestyle and eighty in open or something. And those people, those numbers, like everyone overlaps. Like yeah, everyone does both. And then beginner maybe a fifteen, and same for intermediate. So maybe I'd say overall maybe a hundred twenty, hundred. 25 yeah. competitors so it's like almost a f like a third but yeah. you have <laughs> you have just as many people you'll yeah. see just chilling and enjoying the the space and the time off because at, at in europe at european events what we value just as much if not more as the comp days is, is the off days the mm -hmm. off days are the best like you'll see like we have four off days and two on days and like at, yeah. at Mako, you're like you have four on days and yeah. one afternoon that's an off yeah. day but at, in europe it's like you you want like more than half to be chill and that's I what love that. yeah, yeah it's so sick and it it just it just fosters like um just togetherness and also like just i think about this a lot because i've traveled so much with gt and like my company and my my squad and at EKC, I, I'd never seen, like, the companies, like, have so much time together. Like, Seoul, yeah. as the team, had a lot of time together. And, like, yeah, the O and, like, all of them had time to do stuff, like, around the event. Like, mm. to, to film. Like, it's really nice to have that time if you're a team traveling as well. But just to confirm, this 2023 with the amount of planning that you have in and based on last year, this is going to be an NAKO level event. I I I I really can't say that confidently because I know how ridiculous NAKO is. Like, yeah, every standpoint because like just budget wise, we're we're so far off what Sweet does. Like, mm. Sweet one of the most ridiculously like committed entities in the kanama world for that for what yeah. they do for you because like the hotel yeah is ridiculous the varsity feeder is an incredible event like varsity feeder is like the kind of venue that like hosts artists like yeah i don't know like just um i don't remember who was there like a week after we were like jpeg yeah. mock or something yeah, like that yeah. just big artists go to varsity feeder the 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 venue for ekc is like a techno club and it's yeah. sick in its own way but it, and it's not the same as the varsity feeder exactly no i i i think it has nako properties and i think like hype wise i i can confidently say that it's it it, it has like a similar level but like uh, just logistically and like i don't know just yeah just sweets is just ridiculous for what they do like i, yeah. I have so much but attendance wise it is going to be um, around there right maybe yeah i i think it could be um i i think if if nako had around 500 people uh, this year for me it's a well my, it's a crapshoot i have no idea what's going to happen and that's <laughs> sick in one way and in another way it's a bit worrying because it's like i'm not alone doing this i have a team and the e european family is like yeah, helping there out. to help and like people are always ready to lend a hand so like in the run up to the event, I'm like pretty much doing like um like all the coordinating. Like I'm doing yeah. absolutely all the coordinating, all the the company like uh, relations. So I'm reaching out to everyone. Um like the EKC feed, I basically work with a graphic designer who makes me the template mm. for the feed and I do all of that. And then yeah. for certain work that like I don't feel confident doing, like the sponsor grid that I'll put on the back of a t-shirt or like making the logo, he'll do that. But like I do a huge brunt of the work before yeah. and, and then it's a lot of talking. Yeah. I love, like I'll call Ole and we'll talk for like an hour and a half every week, just to bounce stuff off. And then I'm working with him to make the event Kanama, for example, and like other stuff. And on the day of, he's my tech God. He's like, up there with the projector and yeah. he's helping me with the challenge stuff. So I have, I have a lot of help, but it's like, it's still like, 
you're still realizing that you're in charge of like 400 people mm. and and it's 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 not something i was ever trained for like same for like running an event like i was i never took like business classes and now i have to do treasury stuff yeah. management i have to like do design stuff i have to do like marketing social media so it's like it's really sick in that way where i get to learn a bunch of different skills just by throwing this event but in some ways i'm also like damn i'm doing this like head first yeah uh, like there's yeah there's just but it, it, it it's an amazing opportunity to be able to do this it's really insane like that i get to who's do this. um who's confirmed to go so far Oh, like from, I mean, so far we've announced you guys. Yeah. Lotus. We've announced 365. Yep. We've announced Hand Plan, Kendama France. Like we've announced players from like Perspective Kendama is one of them. Um, We've had people already, like, for example, if you go to the Discord, you'll see like a few names. You see like yeah. Ezra is coming. Yeah. You'll see... um like people posting on their story like evelyn mason posted on their story yeah, yeah. yo I'm coming i need help like just random people are just sending like not just companies and of course we have companies i can tell you we have players from grain theory i can tell you we have oh also stupid I, we have the high receipts of course yeah. okay. we have the literal like and we'll talk more about them later maybe but yeah. like i really want to go deeper into that um so who's in the high receipts we have uh, Kusa, so we have Nobu, we have Chrome, we have Soma and Yasu, and then we have GT, we have Kaito. So there you go. That's four already. Four players. Players. Yeah, I mean, two ex-world champions, uh, two players that have, like, Nobu's been in the top 10 of Kanama World Cup for the past, yeah, how many years? Since yeah. it started, he was, like, yeah. maybe 2015, 16, he's always been consistently in top 10. Soma was two times on the catch and flow podium, I think. Yeah. They're ridiculous. Like the most, like one of the most like decorated and like, I don't know, just talented groups of individuals out there. Um, but going back, yeah, we have Grain Fury coming. We have people from the Kanama Depot coming. Yeah. We have people from Quad coming. Okay. Uh, Soul Kanamas. We have. Like the specific players, you know, if Alex, Chad. Um... Yeah, I can already tell you. I think people will connect it. Chad's been everywhere. Everyone yeah. knows Chad's going to come. Yeah. Alex and Kelvin are going to come because they're going to try to, like, defend their titles. I'm not going to tell you who's coming from Quad because that's hype. Yeah. I'm not – like, from GT, obviously, Jake Weens is going to MC my event. Like, there's yeah, no yeah. way I'm not making yeah. that happen. Um, I think – is it Edwin, Stodd, Chris June? Yeah, and Elijah. Onishi. Elijah, awesome, yeah, yeah, and that's incredible. Like that's in that's itself, awesome, yeah. But it's like I'm not surprised when I talked to Stad at, at at battle. He was like instantly in, and I knew like those yeah. dudes are ready to just send it. And I know that to be like in the community, you have to travel and you have to be visible and you have to meet new people and players like for them coming out here is also an opportunity to scope out some European players who are under the radar chilling. Yeah. And it's like, it's great to have representation yeah. in places like this because it's, they're a newer company. They're going to get their stuff out here. They already have gotten their stuff out here. I know Kanama senses carries some, uh free six five but it's it's a way of fostering connections with wholesalers and mm. like that can only grow kanama here so it's so sick these guys are coming as well and they yeah. want to compete because like i know chris is still loving competing and they have edwin who's a shoe in to any competition he participates in so yeah he needs experience and this is perfect yeah and he's never been overseas oh really okay yeah never overseas been a passport I don't even know if June has ever been overseas. I know Stodd has. Stodd went to Japan and he's been to EKC in 2019. But yeah, so that's sick. And I know Elijah went to Catch and Flow in 2018, I think. So it's like Edwin is going to be like the first player. Like this, it's going to be his first time to come like in yeah. Europe. So for Lotus, um, yeah, I mean, exactly like you said about fostering relationship with wholesale customers. That's what we're going to kind of do. We're doing a little tour. So yeah, it's me, Marcus Lander, Russ, first time overseas, uh, Rhea, the newest, the newest added player. And then, um, 
um, Franta. And yes. we're going to be doing a little tour around, which I posted on the profile, but, you know, yeah. hitting the bigger communities like Scotland and Czech Republic, um, Barcelona and France. So it's, it's awesome that like, EKC yeah, you're is, major, major yeah, one. yeah. Um, competition wise, how is the, uh, the venue for lighting? Oh, for, it's good. It's good. Really okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, we're chilling on that. And like the whole venue is lit. <laughs> Okay, like cool. literally i like i've told them i was like it's important to have the stage lit but like the whole venue needs to be lit up so everyone can play, play. And, like i know that it's like it's sort of different to like i guess at nako in the first days that's how it is because yeah. when you're at the hotel the light is good everywhere and like yeah. the competition is not the main thing but it's like um we only turn off the room lights during like finals when we really want it to be about the competition. But if not during the rest of the time, you can, you can always jam and there's an outdoor space in the back. Awesome. There's like a patio in the back. It's, it's pretty big. Um, I think last year, most of the people were out there cause it was beautiful out. Um, it was actually a pain. We had to like always run in the back. Like, yo is. Yeah. Yeah. So this year for, um, this year we're hooking up with like an like a, a another mic to okay, like cool. another, like monitor outside and we're just gonna be like yeah through this mic to the outside like looking for blah 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 come to the stage it's gonna be easier um, but no the venue is really nice it's and it's it's really homely like the the guys there are super chill like cool. um, loved Kanama so much like the minute my event was done last year and like we had some hiccups last year i'm not gonna lie like we had a few hiccups we had like some scheduling hiccups some wi-fi hiccups stream hiccups electric hiccups <laughs> we had everything that could have happened happen and then like the scheduling problem like snowballed um but even with all of that as soon as we were done uh, they're like yo so next year yeah that's sick it's down. and um yeah and and I was like one of the first people to book their venue for 2023. They're like okay. you, because they valued the event so much. And yeah. they, I think they made so much money because like, it was like a two day event during the day and European canal players and canal players in general, when they come to places like this, they want to party, they want to drink. So they were drinking from like 12 AM or uh, 12 PM till like the end of the event. And as soon as the event ended, it was techno party. And then, the Kanawha players came back and other people came back. So the bar was running for like 17 hours. Wow. Days in a row. So like for sure these dudes balled out and then they were like, yeah, you, you, you guys did amazing. Like you made like the venue was just alive. It was so sick. It was, yeah. it was, it was what are you doing competition wise? Freestyle open. What else? Yeah. Just freestyle open, uh, beginner and intermediate speed ladders. Um, we do both of those straight up in the morning on on friday we go oh. all the way through those to the winners um and then on friday afternoon we do freestyle qualifiers uh so that'll be in the afternoon and then the venue we have it until like 7 p.m i think and then everyone goes to the park and chills <laughs> all right cool and then we all eat together like people can barbecue or we order food to the park and the park is like going to be a 10 minute walk um from the venue and then everyone's just gonna go to the park and chill after the event and then the judges on friday night they all go back somewhere and they review all the runs yeah and then their rankings for top uh 15 because we have one seated player this year i so actually wait, haven't okay so speed letters are friday and then freestyle is what would you say friday or saturday Friday is the qualifiers for freestyle. Okay. So everyone's going to do one run and it's going to be recorded? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's on the stream. Okay. So it's like when the judges review the runs, they just rewatch the stream. Yeah. And then um, what happens is uh, the judges, like, watch. Everyone gets a one-minute run. And then um, we separate everyone into groups, just like a catch and flow. Yeah. And, um, and then... Every, and then on Saturday morning at the event, the first thing we do is we announce the top 16 and the matchups. And then after that, we go straight into open division and we run open division all the way through until the finals and then the winner. And then at the very end, 
like let's say around 5 p.m on saturday um freestyle starts okay so okay so friday qualifiers they find out who's going in uh qualifying is one minute per round yeah, or 40 one, seconds. okay and then yeah. saturday is only open and then the top 16 of freestyle Okay, so end. open up to 16, or you guys go straight through open? Oh, all the way through. We go open. all the way to the winner. Yeah. Like, we love, I love open personally, but yeah. I know that it's not the main show here because yeah, people freestyle. love freestyle more. And yeah. like, I yeah. personally love freestyle more, but I still really enjoy open. But, yeah. and, and I know that that's the culture here. So it's like, and I remember when Chrome did it in 2019, it was a freestyle only event. Mm. It was more like catch and flow. And it's like, I like that, but I, I know that if we want like the event to be like, just to like, um, I don't know, cover the most ground we can, we need yeah. to have open as well. It's important. Um, but it's like the open division is just going to run all the way through a uh, single limb because for several reasons, just scheduling is crazy. Having a double limb with like a, at Battle of the Border, they had 90 people, 95 people in, in I think, in open division. And it was nuts. Like, first yeah. match, I go up against, um, I think, one of the new Kusa tribe members. And he, like, he has the first attempt, and he starts closing his eyes. And I'm like, oh, what? I've what seen this. this. Yeah. And, and then I was like, it was exactly what Kelvin does. Yeah. It's like the exact picture perfect routine. And I was like, oh, damn, someone else is doing it now. But that makes sense because Kelvin came to EKC and he won. Yeah, so it's like that, that. that technique is fully like, Valid. like it works because he won. And um, basically at battle, I noticed like maybe three or four people doing this other than Kelvin. And then I saw KD like and talk to him and he was like, dude, this is going to take a while. And then they their open division ran like. Keep it long. Hours. Like it was one of the longest like open division comps and they had one day to do it. So I know like in America with the the comp mindset, if they're having trouble running it like that, yeah, there's no way I can run it like that here with all these European guys just chilling. And I love that. And I love that. And I don't want to mess with that. So yeah. I like that we can do single limb. And on a on another level, I still feel like if you look at a single limb comp and a double limb comp, the same players will win. Yeah. It doesn't change. Like yeah. if you look at the top 10, it's it's predominantly the same. Like yeah. these dudes, the winners of double limb comp, they don't lose. Right. It's the same single limb. They're not gonna lose. So yeah. it's like I don't think it changes the the result all too much. I like the idea of it, but I don't think it's essential. And I think it's scary for event organizers like for scheduling i think it's so scary and it's like maybe in the future we can do something different where it's like um we do pools you know we don't do 1v1 the whole time mm. maybe there's groups yeah for open vision and like the bracket works differently but for now i think get when we start having over 100 competitors for double limb it's gonna be a grind and you need days yeah. it's not and you need like you need a battle the border or NAKO's like size stage. And I do not have that. I have like a small stage that's like like it's like you're like it's like a pit. Like yeah. the people. And I love the feeling of that smallness. It's like you have to watch that. There's like nothing else. That's it's cool. everything. So it's like, yeah, i I think double M is cool, but it's not for Europe really. It, I don't think it really works out here. So in terms of re rules and regulations, do you think in the future you're going to limit time um, so people can't spend On the time? Shot clock? Yeah, shot clock, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we've talked about this a little bit. Have we talked about this? No, I heard somebody yesterday talk about you talking about it. Yeah, there's there's rumors, um, <laughs> and they're very founded, and I haven't talked about it yet. Um, so we don't have to talk about it yet, but yeah. Yeah, we... we there's going to be an announcement coming up soon, but there will for sure be like, yeah, um, makes sense. like in the future, I think, because if you look at like now, even in baseball, they have a shot clock. I just yeah. saw that uh, they have one in tennis for the serve. They have one in basketball for the okay. 
uh, for them free throw and poker and well chess, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have it in literally every sport. So it's like I think in kendama, it's it's gonna become the norm at some point. And I can already tell you that EKC will be the first event to field it. Okay. The judge, how long do you think it's going to take? And you think the judge is going to? Uh, yeah, we're going to do 15 seconds. 15 seconds to start your trick? Exactly. Not to do the whole trick. And um, I've talked about this extensively with a lot of players. So I've talked about it with... Um, uh, yeah, but mostly with KD, actually. And okay. like Fraser and just players and Ben and just a bunch of players. And then, of course, we talked about it with Kelvin and... Um, it actually LVKO was supposed to be um a small beta test for the oh. shot club. And um, but basically what happened was they it's their it was their first event, so in the end it just didn't happen, which makes sense because they were like, We don't know how we're gonna be able to manage this. Yeah. But yeah, um Kelvin and I are gonna work on a video actually to okay. announce it. But I'm telling you this now, it's cool. Because we get to talk about it, and I would have wanted to talk about it with someone like more in depth. But it's like, yeah, we're Calvin and I are gonna make like a small announcement video for it, and um, yeah, we, that sounds funny. We, yeah, dude, it's gonna be sick. I really want him to be like the person that's like <laughs> talking about this, and of course, like endorsing it because uh, he was like the whole reason why I this this whole thing came to light. Yeah. Um. There's a double edge to it. It's like it's gonna, it's I don't know if it's gonna hinder players like Kelvin, or if it's gonna like help him. But one thing it is gonna do for every single major competitor who's ever done open division and thrived in open, it's gonna make them think now about how much time they actually take. Yeah. To do that. like players like Nick or Alex or Madi, it doesn't matter how long you took before. Now you're gonna have to think about it. And it's mm. going to be like, this is going to become a factor. And I don't want it to be the main thing. I'm not going to put the clock on the big screen. What's going to happen is we're going to have like um, the, you know, the judge is going to have his phone like this up to his chest, 15 seconds. And then you start your trip. Oh, yeah. So like I probably take, I, I have an issue rushing. So like at NAKO, I, I was doing pretty good because I'd take like five seconds, you know, and that was just enough That's for me. not even rushing. Five seconds is a longer time than I think most people do take. Yeah. Like, I've but that's what I had to do. Like before, I just see the trick and pan and just fucking go for it. And then I miss because I'm not taking enough time. But like, I think most players are just taking like five seconds. Like, five is probably more than most players, right? It is. It is more. Yeah. Because I've, like, we, I actually went back and watched a bunch of the Battle of the Book. <laughs> and I was like averaging out, like, yeah, what's like, like, I was looking at the whole. Uh, line of players and I would watch every single single attempt for like four different tricks I yeah. did I go that hard and like average out every try for every match I just like watched four different levels of the competition and it probably averaged out like around four five seconds yeah. top and that yeah. was with Kelvin so it's yeah. like Kelvin uh, he has times where he was like at 30 seconds and like yeah, if you watch videos of him doing it, he really takes his time. And it's like, of course he does. Because it's yeah. like, it's it not, yeah. there's no rules. And like, it works for him. And he's an insanely like good Konama player. And he hits those tricks. So like, it makes sense that he's doing it. Um, and I still think, I and when we like were at the after session Battle of the Border, he like, when we were talking about this, like, KD was like, yo, like, just try it right now. Put it, put something on the clock and let's see how long 15 seconds is for you. And he, he got into the zone and like, he started after like 13 seconds and he was like, it's probably not <laughs> going to make that much different for me. Yeah. If he just realizes it. Yeah. But it's like, it's going to be a shift. It's going to be yeah. a change. Um, It's, it's polarizing because it's like introducing a new element to a, competitive format that's exist for existed for years yeah um but i i think i i want to like i said i want to field it there's no yeah. like i'm not a kendama association there's no like yeah K at the end of like um our our organization so it's like we're gonna field it we're gonna see how it is um we're not gonna be draconian about it like 
Yeah. The rule is going to be what it is. And we see if it works out, it works out. If it helps for our scheduling, thank God. Um, I'm going to be stoked. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to go further into the rule about penalties, because yeah. there will be penalties. So the in the rule set that we had in mind and that I've talked about with people, um, basically you have one penalty uh, where if you go over 15 seconds, you get to retry that attempt, that same trick. Uh, but if you do it a second time, you basically forfeit a try. You don't forfeit a point. You forfeit your try. And so mm -hmm. the player, if the player went before you, the other player, then he gets a point if he hit the trick. And if he missed, it's just the other player's turn again. Gotcha. Okay. But it is, it's a big change. Like the idea of forfeiting a try is already like, so a pretty big thing. I mean, I'm, that, I'm... one time per match, you're allowed that penalty. So every one match per match. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it, every match it resets. It's pretty casual. Yeah, I mean, it is. And like, if you compare it to tennis and all that stuff, it's the same rule. Because in tennis, if you take too much time on your first serve, you forfeit your first serve and you go to your second serve. Okay. So it's, it's pretty much the same. So uh, it's to start the trick. So like the time is getting to 14 and to 15. And then like right around 15, if they really haven't started it yet, then that's when the judge would be like, hey, stop. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. Okay. He's the judge. So, yeah. and I like that it gives that new, like, dimension to judging. Yeah. Because I yeah. feel like the judge is a bit too passive in Kendama. Yeah. I don't want to say that there's, like, controversial calls and shit that's not being called, but I like the idea of, like, having the judge, like, have more of a presence and a role. And yeah. it and might, dude, it might give, like, this huge tension to the thing. I have no idea. Like, in the final. I, in the finals, we're going to have, like, the judge with an iPad, you know? It's going to be, yeah. like, well, we have one iPad, and it's just going to be, like, we'll, well see. I think, what, yeah. It's I only, think, it, it's only yeah. a few players that are going to think about it. I mean, I think the rest of the players are going to Everyone's going like, to think about it, but yeah. only players are going to have to adjust. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to think about it for a second, but then just be, like, oh, no, just do usual thing, ignore it, and then I'll be under 15 seconds anyway, you know? Yeah, you dude. Know? It's going to... I don't know. It's, it's gonna, a long time. To start a trend is a long time. So, and, I mean... I'm a firm believer in routine helping performance. So yeah. it's like if you add a routine element to um, the actual competition, maybe it's going to help people perform better. I have no idea, but that's what's cool is we're fielding it. We're going to see what happens. If it, if it helps me, that'll be nice. If it doesn't hinder the player, that's the most important because we're thinking about the players first. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really excited to, to see how a new element affects like a format that's existed for so long. Cause there's that there, there needs to be always movement in what we're yeah. doing for Kanama. Cause like my, our end goal is to create a format that's like perfect. Right. That's yeah. like, like in skateboarding SLS, their format was so good. It went to the Olympics. Like yeah. how sick is that? Like yeah. that was created by skaters for skaters and now it's in the Olympics and it's the same for every major sport. Yeah. where the rules really like i mean we want the players to be able to compete in the most like helpful and like comfortable environment but we also want that entertainment factor to be at an all-time high so that people yeah. are like involved and interested so new element let's see what happens i'm excited i got to talk about it with you because yeah. it wasn't something i thought i would talk about with you on this because yeah. it's still like um unannounced but it's better to talk about it here like this and have like a open about it yeah. more in-depth discussion and it's going to send people to this cast they're going to be like what With the hell it definitely be a trailer thing that i'll add yeah what what kind of subject is that like yeah. what are you doing? um in terms of regulation about kendama size and bevel length and glow ken boxes what are your thoughts towards that mm -hmm. yeah we're we're ditching that yeah. <laughs> um i think it's within reasonable, like, um, I don't yeah. know, just like, we'll see it as yeah. like, I'll see the Kanamas that people are using and the, and it will be up to the judge's discretion as well. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, I'm, I know there's like an advantage and a disadvantage to a big bevel. Like, yo, you're going to get, if you get a, that quad J sick trick yeah. <laughs> with your big ass bevel, how good are you really at hucking that thing consistently? Or it's like, I'm 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 not as fussed with with like sizes and dimension. I just want to see cool shit. Yep. 
that's that's basically what i feel like modern kendama is now it's like we want to simple stuff and we understand stuff is easier on some things and harder on some things but it's like in the end at the end of the day if everyone's boosting if everyone's using steroids then the person who's using them the best is still the best (laughs) um like judge regulation uh not uh, judge the way they're going to judge freestyle once they get to the top 16 is this going to be three judges are they going to look at categories yeah no overall for everyone okay. difficult for everyone yeah how how how's your judging have you ever judged uh no i haven't i've judged like small things but i is that something that interests you um no because i want to compete yeah, that, I knew that. And same for like Chad. I asked Chad. I yeah. wanted to ask you, but I was also like, I want this guy to come over and compete. Like, yeah. I want you to come and like chill and compete. Chad yeah. was the same. So, no, right now I'm in process for judges. Okay. I've confirmed one, basically. I'm no, sure you'll I'm, get some bangers. It's hard. People want to compete. And like, me and Ole are very like performing judges and we're more than like qualified for it. But like, we need to be on the event so we have to do that people like jake are qualified but he's emceeing um people like ben are qualifying but they're not coming i'm mad ben no, no. he's not coming it's a bummer but um i he's my like number one choice actually small announcement for right now um he's gonna be judging um from san jose for qualifiers oh awesome okay so we'll have the free judges on on stage of the day of but in the evening when it comes to the deliberation and the choices ben will be added to that roster okay. as an external like um like judge consultant yeah cons- yes exactly <laughs> judges consult he'll love that he loves he loves business like, corporate terms yeah yeah, yeah. it's just so <laughs> i could tell by his physics terms when it comes to games, yeah because we're just right? we're just we're just we're just like i don't Dorks. know we're not serious about everything yeah it's just mm-hmm. so funny to give it some serious terms so it's going to be good to have him on as judge's consultant uh, <laughs> and he yeah so he'll review all the or maybe he'll watch it live what time is it going to start at? yeah yeah i'm not going to ask him to watch it no live. It, it's going to be I mean, it's probably going to be right? better for him it's if nine it's hours behind yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to make him wake up at 3 a.m. to do it. He will be up early for it, though. But yeah. he can watch everything uh, later. And he'll have... To, but he can... I don't want to be mean to... like, But he'll have to scroll through a few things. And yeah. even on the day when they do deliberate, um, how they were judging last year, basically, is they were like... I gave them a list of the players who were competing in that order, and then they would, like... They would make their notes. They would, like highlight like the players who were like susceptible of being chosen they wouldn't rewatch the whole thing they would watch yeah obviously circles players, yeah yeah that were like better yeah and so yeah this year ben will be judging from san jose it's gonna be fun okay that's cool yeah i love that element of it and it was actually his idea the whole um reviewing in the evening because he wants as much time as he can have to yeah. judge uh because i watched also your podcast with him and yeah. He reiterated that, and I know he wants that much time. And yeah, he talked to me about it. It was funny. I was like, "Dude, it's my event. Let's do it." Like, I, who else are we gonna ask? Like, yeah, I I fully trust his um his judgment on on like competing and stuff. So it was a no brainer, and I think it worked really well. And I came back home at like eleven p.m. and Alex Smith, Walter from AKA. And Ben were just sitting on my floor watching like Twitch on my TV until like 1 a.m. like deliberating. That's so and cool. Was, but I was like, oh, I need to sleep. I was like so tired. So this year I'm gonna find a new place for them. I need to figure out a new spot where they can do this. <laughs> I was like, what do I do? Yeah. They need a TV chill a little spot. separate room in the venue or something. Yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah. You just you just gave me a good idea actually and then like yeah mark it as like a private room or something yeah the venue upstairs made like a stream room where they stream dj sets yeah and it could be fun but what do they call um when there's like the there in american politics when there's a really big emergency going on yeah they have a little room where they go in oh man 
I but I know exactly what you're talking about. It's it's just like yeah, you're you're gonna look it up because I yeah. I it's gonna bother me if we don't figure this out. Um, I remember the picture about I think like nine eleven. They were in no, the I think it's the pic. The images I'm remembering are like the Bin Laden. Oh um, yeah, Bin Laden, Obama. Yeah, wasn't that it? Their whole the Situation Room. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly it. Yeah, let's do. Oh man, dude. <laughs> and then we're gonna be like. I'm gonna be like, let me phone in on my judges, <laughs> San Jose, California. Let me, let me like. Uh, That'd be cool little video. Throw a camera in there and then release it later. Yeah, dude, it would be cool. Yeah, and they have it all set up. I'll ask them if they're down. But basically, Friday night after the event, <laughs> it's like a techno party in there. So they'll be yeah. like doing that shit, and as soon as they come out, it's gonna be like full blown yeah. techno party downstairs. So it'd be cool to know like how they pick the top sixteen too, like what they choose. That'd be they, cool video. Yeah, they look at um yeah, sorry, I, I just need to get my computer charger. They look at um they look at mostly like overall and difficulty for all of them. It's I think that's mostly like how yeah, how Western Kendama is judged. Yeah. So that's gonna be an interesting factor for this year as well, where we have players coming from Japan who have never competed uh oh, so in excited. style who are both catch and flow world champions yasu and kaito ah. and they both have to compete um as yeah. in a western like environment and i think we've talked about this but like for example at catch and flow this year takuya if he were to compete in western like competitions would win everything <laughs> and i have no doubt about this because when i saw what he was doing in freestyle against um Shinosuke, I was like, this is broken. This is this this is that's so funny. Stad just brought that up and I've Nick, never seen that bad a, of a upset. A, that, that was a bad upset, but I've never seen such a dominant display. Like mm. and I've in seen that run lot, specifically? No, and in, in just oh, just Joe. watching it yeah. at KWC as well. Because I've been okay. there, like I've never seen such dominant displays of Kanama. Like it was like it truly powerful it's like you're just watching this kid like you you i've i've rarely watched someone and i've been like he cannot miss like he's that good that he just does not like i've seen the galgar of course and he has that element like at nako during open he was like that but it's like takuya is just a monster like yeah really. and i haven't seen tiblex either i'm sure there's some similarity but even tiblex himself said takuya is more consistent and after seeing Takuya so much, I have really big doubts if anyone is as consistent as him. Is, I really wanted to get him out as well to this year's event. I'm not. You know he's coming. No, he's not coming. Okay. Next year. Next year, I my whole. So we can we can segue into the high receipts if you're down. But yeah, my my whole like plan was to like reintegrate like <laughs> Japanese players into Western comps. At uh, like at the same level that it was before, um, COVID, because mm. before COVID, you, like you go to Nako, there's, um, Nobu, Nobu Yuki, yeah, um, Stu, there was uh like it just and then a bunch of just Japanese players that come like Tomoki came to like, MKOs and like, yeah yeah, a bunch of people so Canada yeah like. And it just brings a and Coda as well. Yeah. It just brings a different like, um, just dynamic to Kanama to just have people from the land of Kanama just there. Yeah, part of this world community, and they need to be up to date with it, and their players need to be interacting with it, and especially those four, the high receipts, like they need to be stimulated. They yeah. need to. They've never traveled outside of Japan. Like, I would it would get stale for me if yeah. I was only in one place and 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 like actually wouldn't because i love european kanama so much and like i don't think it but i definitely think that leaving gives you that opportunity for perspective and like growth and having these kids come here is gonna like change their lives because they've never traveled abroad like, yeah for two and nobu's never come to europe same for soma and like they're all really young and i want them to have that experience so bad so that mm -hmm. was like I've been working on the high receipts project since EKC 2022 finished. Wow. Like, as soon as EKC was done, 
in my list of what's done, like what what wasn't here, like that was number one. It was like I need some cracked Japanese kids. I need that um that presence. And so I went to KWC like three weeks after EKC and like instantly walked up to them and was like, guys, like, would you want to come to Europe? And then from there, I had to like work with Kusa Chrome uh, GT Glokin and their parents. <laughs> I had to talk to their parents. I had to get people to talk to their parents because they're kids. Um, and I don't speak Japanese. Um, so it was like just a whole jumble of like stuff that needed to be done. And when that all came together and when I was about to post that announcement, like I was like shaking. I was like, damn, this is, I'm about to drop like the hypest, like most worked on thing I've ever done. Almost. That's amazing, just, dude. Posted it. And then like pandemonium and yeah, these kids are just gonna, yeah, they're going to travel to Paris, then Rome, then EKC. And they have a guardian Coda. Okay. Coda that you know as yeah. the filmer of KWC tricks, as the chooser of KWC tricks. He's on yeah. the panel for that. Sick dude. Um, and he's just traveling with them, their guru. Cause he's like, he's the only one who speaks good English. Without yeah. him, I don't I would have had to do it. And traveling that much right before EKC would have been suicide. Yeah. So, but Coda's doing it and he can speak Japanese. And then I'm meeting them in the airport of Paris anyway, in Paris anyway. And then we have a few days in Paris and then they're flying off to Rome uh meeting up with Davide from Chrome staying with him and his parents cuz he lives on the same street as his parents so they're just staying in like Italian family I'm going to love that dude these uh, kids are culture so shock like in yeah. Paris we're staying like a 20 minute walk from the Louvre and like they're like right in the dead center of Paris it's going to be amazing it's so but it's cool. going to be going to be different for them it's yeah. going to be really like, dude, imagine, like, they've never, like, there's, in Japan, I've rarely even seen, like, a homeless person. Yeah. <laughs> Japan is such a sheltered country in Strict some ways. Country, and yeah. Go to Paris and Rome, which have, like, this diversity and yeah. this melting pot, and you're just, it's going to be it's crazy. different, yeah. I'm so yeah. excited to see Yasu play in, in person, you know? It's incredible. And they're, yeah. like, the most seized out kids. Kaito is just as if not more yeah. like yeah. he's ridiculous like and they're yeah. all ridiculous and it's so sick and they have like this this like like this, they're just such a group this is such a crew they're a boy yeah. band you know? yeah. Like, yeah. it's such a good um image to have yeah. not they're like one of the mo the pinnacle of like the image of modern canal players if you were right. to show it to someone is that crew if if i if someone were to tell me yo we need a few players to come onto our tv show these kids if yeah. they need no totally need dude. players yeah. to do a demo at a bmx at a dance battle these kids it's like yeah. no brainer you know so it's yeah. like i really believe in them personally so it's like it's that's why i want them to be everywhere that i can yeah. so i'm like i'm their like european manager is our joke yeah, yeah. and then they're yeah i'm like helping book all their stuff and like just yeah so that's another facet of being an event runner for me <laughs> it's like when are they getting to ekc when they're leaving they're arriving on wednesday and uh leaving on monday and are then they camping or no they're staying um at loda's loda who's on native before um he's a good friend of mine uh yeah they it's gonna be already difficult enough for them to acclimate so they're yeah. gonna stay with um with someone here and uh yeah they're like a 10 minute walk from the venue so for people you, who want to get tickets to EKC, where sh is it camping the best option yeah it's so like basically there's one there, there's two campings right now that are packed with canal players so and that's yeah. the european experience is to, to camp it's yeah. it's what we we love doing as well and it's like you go to the camping spot and there's 80 other canal players there like yeah. that's <laughs> so sick. cool you all walk back to the camping spot together. You bike back. You eat in the morning together. It's like being at the hotel, but less, uh, less more free. Yeah, it's fun <laughs> to be together in a in a tent and like it's it brings out something in people. It's just, yeah. it's just no, for gonna, sure. It's like 
Um, it's going to be really fun. Last year, like people enjoyed it so much. They, they were booking the camping like six, seven months in advance. Like, yeah. um, so yeah, there's the camping where you're booked is the closer one. And then there's another camping that's further, but if you have bikes here, you can get everywhere easily. You've been to Copenhagen. Yeah. How it is all the bike, like bikes are king here. Like yeah. if you go to America, road is super wide, sidewalk, super yeah. wide, bike lane. What? Yeah. Come here, road is less wide, sidewalk less wide, big bike lane. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's, I don't own a car. None of my friends own a car. Most people don't have a driver's license. I had to help Jack move today with his girlfriend and they don't have a car. And like, I had to go rent a truck, like yeah. help them move because they didn't have driver's licenses. And so it's like, that's what it is out here. So it's sick. We take trains and bikes and that's how people who come here are going to live. And that's cool. All right. Um, well, if we transition to you, yeah go for it I'm, so I'm um down, but i love <laughs> yeah i love talking about the, the yeah yeah always ready to answer questions about i feel like uh you're in a group of players that started late but caught up hard and yeah i, I think that's accurate and i and you know it's like i feel like you know i started in 2015 were you 2016 no, in October. Yeah, and like it's unfortunate because I I I guess it's unfortunate in one way that we started Kendama that Kendama is so new because I feel like the earliest you could have been like I think it was twenty ten and then most like the first yeah. group was probably 2011, 2012. Four so, years is nothing. <laughs> I know, but like, and it stinks because. But when it is I, a lot. When I started, I you know. I I had I had a passion and motivation to like I'm a competitive person so I wanted to be the top and be really good and and uh, I did feel like I immediately started having to, having to catch up right um, yeah and um, yeah obviously like every player after us forever is going to have that but eventually just like any sport it's going to be like yeah people, it's yeah like like there's going to be that renewing right like well, there's going to be a cycle yeah like what you're saying is interesting because we're at the beginning of the cycle and even if you get into it now people you're in yeah. the cradle right. this is the cradle of kendama like the first few years we're still in it like yeah. i'm sorry but those players in 2010 like they were like fetuses yeah it's, like this is the cradle now for me it's like i if you look at subcultures like Tony Hawk was not the first skater. No. Was yeah. not the best yeah. skater. He arrived years after, but he's the one we remember. So it's like the yeah. person who we remember in 50 years might not have started Konami yet. So it's like whenever the hell you get into it. That's you're... great motivation. I love that. Because not only for me, but also for those people who started in 2019 and 2020. There's a big, I mean, dude, at every gym I go to, a lot of players are the 2020 you know, uh, electronic yeah. music type of thing. And and so yeah. like... But every single one of them has the potential to yeah. like change our culture forever. Like, because we're, we're so new. And yeah. that's why it's so important right now to get involved into Kendama and to throw events and to facilitate like um, meetups and to start companies and create collabs and get relationships yeah. and do cool shit, do cool videos, make yeah. art. You do everything now. It's like we're still at the beginning, so we're still everyone's still. It's still a trial trial period in my head. Mm. Like, yeah. But what you were saying earlier about like thinking about getting better, I I didn't realize Kanama was big until a year after I did, and even then, mm. it still took me a year to fully understand and grasp. Like, if I look back at like Instagram, who I was following at the beginning, it, it was like five people mm. for a year and a half. I didn't see anything at the beginning. Okay. I was only playing because I liked it. I never had a cap on. I never had like a, a vision of who was already good and people were like. Yeah. You were in the scene. Yeah. I hadn't seen anyone. Yeah. I hadn't. I didn't understand the the general scope of it. And sometimes I like look back and I like regret. Yeah. I'm like should have dug deeper and but most times i'm like i'm so happy i didn't because like yeah. finding it at our age because you're just a little bit older than me mm -hmm. 
I think if I'd found it earlier, I may not have treasured it half mm. as much as I do. Like yeah. now and as I did when I started because I didn't have the proper tools to treasure something the way I did with Kanama, where I was like, before I was in a bunch of sports. I did yeah. so much competitive sports. I did athletics, swimming, table tennis, judo, mm. football, uh, the European football. Soccer. And then yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You're Soccer. Not get... yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I did so much stuff and I I fell off of all of it. And then I was with skaters and I, like I dabbled a bit, but never found the the rhythm that I did when I found Kanama. And I was yeah. like, damn, like thank everything that I found this now. So it's like I'm I'm really happy I found it when I did because I, I have no idea what the hell would have happened if yeah. I found it. So it's like, I'm, I'm really happy with that, but I did have to, I did have to catch up someone, but in Europe, it was easier. There were less, there were less <laughs> prolific players. And like, it was, it was more of a squad. <laughs> the, there's like, yeah, the people, we, the person we had to catch up to was Rolf. Cause he was traveling. Oh, everywhere. dude, that's and winning everything, right? Wolf would kick our ass, dude. Like yeah. at the beginning, 2017, 2018, even 2019, like none of us were traveling abroad. None of us had that like perspective and like conditioning that he did. Cause he had, he had competitive conditioning cause he had yeah. been to KC and, and catch yeah. football. so, so much better than us. It was, yeah. it was like watching, like, I don't know, like, uh, an alligator in like a, a koi pond. Yeah, that's a good example. It was like that. It was like he was like, yeah. And like it took years for us to like get to his level, and he still, uh, I'm, I still firmly believe like he, he, he could like compete and always perform well yeah. here. There's no doubt in my mind. Like he's such, such a good competitor. But so it took it took us a while to catch up to him. But other than that, we were chilling. <laughs> we yeah. were. Like, we weren't seeing everything else that was happening elsewhere. Okay. And it, it took until me getting onto grain theory that I really, mm. that was my kick in the ass. Uh, when I, cause mm. I got on grain theory three years in pretty much. Oh wow. It's 2018. Okay. I got in yeah in uh, pretty early in retrospect. And then mm. I was pro in 2019 at the end of the year. So it was like, yeah, I did, I did have like a really steep like progression and yeah I want to talk about that like i was i was just talking to stod for two and a half hours that interview's gonna come out pretty soon but um you know we we're talking about new gen style right that that switch uh of new gen from it's really if you really look at kdc tricks like the the level 12 level 11s if you look at 2015 to 2016 there's just a gigantic leap and that's the year that 2016 and bryson won yeah. um but yeah, like yeah like which is I don't know about you. I mean, we started the same year, so it's probably pretty cool to talk about. But like, I was taught Kendama of the, the guy that taught me was just like, here's a bird, this crazy guy from my high school could do over the valley. And then I looked at the Zach Yord edit. And then I started playing and I did a few lunars. And then I go on Instagram and see Dwesty and then, you know, Dwesty doing juggles, like the early new gen. Uh, and of course, Bryson and then Liad hit in 2017, which just fueled me. And I talk about Liad every fucking interview because I love that kid so much and the way that he played. Um, but like, did you have a similar uh, introduction to style of Kendama? And then what oh, made you hit New Gen so super hard? Different. It was so different. My oh, okay. style of Kendama birthed from Rolf. Like for yeah. real, like the initial juggle ghost house. Oh, you're really initially you, you, okay. Gotcha. But like for a year, as I told you, I'd never seen a Kanama video. Okay. Yeah. So it's like my style then was like from what my friend was teaching me and I would do, I was so good at two turn airplane, bro. I was, okay. Yeah. I was doing earth turns for like a, about nine months to a year or two. I didn't, yeah. I had maybe one juggle the big cup, but other than that, it was no, just I like. I didn't know what a juggle was, but I was okay. really good at like flips. I was good at around Europe. I was super honed on that. Okay, okay. Good at earth turns and then whirlwinds about six months in. Yeah. Like seven months in. But like um as soon as I met Rolf, that's the first time I saw juggles. Like mm. for like or like maybe a bit earlier, but it's like it's the first time that I started like actually like thinking about like, oh I 
I I like what he's doing. I want to be doing more of what he's doing. And that was the first time that that happened to me. But before that, there was not much gotcha. that happened. That, like, I wasn't as hyper fixated and like aware as I was okay. later on. Okay. Like at the beginning, I was, I was really about like just what I was enjoying. And then as soon as I met Ben, that mm. was like my, my biggest thing was meeting Ben. And then, um, yeah, just watching uh, his edits at the beginning. And then that's what got me into like, oh shit, I can, I have the tools to invent stuff. And then I invented yeah. stuff and like created and like furthered and worked off of instead of just chilled. <laughs> like yeah, cause... like I guess if we're gonna talk about your progression, we can maybe jump forward to your peak and how you influence the game. Which you can agree with me or disagree on this, but I feel like Tio's style is like incredible Tama control, like new gen, but not too many juggles. Um, no, no. Yeah, as little as possible. Honed, yeah. uh, honed taps, cush taps, yeah. push taps to stunt fasts. Yeah, um, a lot of those. And then obviously all around, but I think, I feel like your specialty is a lot of like tapping, late flip, and juggle. limited juggles, and time control, right? Yeah, I think it, it can boil down to that. And then I, I'll, I'll like, for I'm, I'm like, I love stalls and I Stilts. can do a yeah, stalls. I can do a lot of stalls. I love fast hands. Yeah. I can yeah, I can do all the toss ins. I'm pretty good at like multiple flips and stuff. But like yeah. as far as like my style and like the defining thing that I would go do and freestyle and stuff, yeah, it's a lot of like taps, precisions, laid flips, no juggles. Yeah. Uh fast hands. And then it evolved into other stuff like loops. Yeah. Yoins. Um and consistency. Then... You're a big consistency guy. Yeah, I'm I'm I I don't I guess I film consistency tricks, but yeah, I can do like yeah. I, I loved consistency early on and I still do. And then and then yeah, and then I have a handful of tricks that like I definitely like um like helped progress and then a few maybe I created like um the cheese roll. I don't know if yeah. you remember this. Uh -uh. You don't remember the cheese roll? It's like a 2020 uh, trick of the year like i roll the ken up my arm and then lunar to lunar for oh example. yeah 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 throw up the tama swap the the ken it rolls up my arm yeah 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 turn back to lunar um or like the yoink yeah the ken yoink yeah see like marquise doing yeah or the yo yoink where you hold the tama in like stunt grip and you yoink it downwards and right 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 yeah upwards um i don't know like and then a bunch of like kush stuff that like i feel like i worked off of other people's stuff but then like put into lights or like this fast hand pull out stuff that right. people even call that now like i'm pretty sure i like coined that with ben yeah it's just like i had I had like a really insane run of, or like the two turn auto tap, dude. That's my favorite trick. Like the mm. Ken tap, like mm. where it taps into the air. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, like I can confidently say I created that one. So it's like I did have like this this really crazy run creative of kind of like, but it's not like a, a string flow creativeness, which people no. think of creativity. No, no. it's and it's, it's a... and neither is it like a polarizing like genre of cre creativity. Uh, yeah. like, it's not like I invented a whole new class of trick, but like individual tricks, I can definitely like proudly yeah. say that there's a few of them like that, that were definitely there and that I've like put into light and, and helped like create. And then, yeah. And then the NBD chase, I was definitely in there and I'm still in there, you know, yeah. I'm a bit more now. I told you already, but not a lot of people know actually that I'm injured and that I have been injured for like four or five months. So I've what's had going to on? About down, yeah. I have like an yeah. It's a kendama injury. It's crazy, but it's like it's on. Oh, I overworked one part of my body without working on the rest. So it's like I have like basically like tissue and muscle damage to my mm. right bicep and to my shoulder. Wow. Like because there's this area here, right? Which yeah. is crazy. There's a bunch of stuff that happens here. There's tendons that connect to your pec, to your 
like um, arm and then back here to your back and like this whole area here is just it's just a mess <laughs> it's yeah that's what i feel like is uh hurts after a while of playing kendama and that's and now it's not going away really like if i lift my arm above my head now here like crazy pulling here and here and like on some okay. days it's better but it's like and i'm doing strengthening and i'm working on it but right now it's like like if i think about grinding the way i used to it's like daunting i'm like damn that's gonna take it out of me like, so what was you think your um is there a certain time or a certain year that you peaked I'm not saying you are never going to go back to that but like i think um, i'm still i'm still there like i yeah. i'm just injured but like i can i can throw down like the same whatever you need to do I've, I've always been i'm way better than i was like i can do all my ig tricks yeah, like from yeah. 2019 2020 like within a few minutes okay. so it's like like except for maybe like the very few that are like ridiculously hard but it's like i i'm definitely still capable of like yeah doing yeah there's there's not a much doubt in my mind that that i can still do all of it and then I I have a million tricks I need to do that are like in, in nigh on impossible, but it's like, yeah, it's just my list. And yeah, those those are like it's I just need to get better, like yeah. physically before I even look at it. But it's tough, you know, when you've been doing it for so long and like it's your lifeblood and it's how I got pro. It's how I make some of my like money. Yeah. And it's like you have to like think about like your health. And I'm so grateful for my like, like extra activities. Yeah. Doing. Like, of course I play Kanama, but that's not what I value the most. EKC and like what I do for the community is what I value the most. And like, I wanted to talk about this to you as well. And to everyone, it's like the way I look at like this injury and like my like journey in Kanama is that we have dozens of players who are amazing at Kanama. who are so good at Kanama, but there's only a handful that can really like do what I do and like grind yeah. the way I do for the community and like pro these events and like shoulder expectations. So it's yeah. like, I'm, I know I'm still like good at Kanama to mo to a point where I can like still be at the top level, but I'm also, I don't want to hinge everything on that. Cause I think yeah. it's healthy. Yeah. And I, I want to hinge everything on being there doing stuff for the community that's like that that no one else is doing well that's a really good point because if yeah. everybody hinged everything on being good at kendama we wouldn't have oh we any, wouldn't have anything we anything, wouldn't have any good shapes this. no oken paint that's op you know what i mean like yeah you would have nothing so yeah. it's like it's so important to to realize that progression and yeah. you're i'm 24 dude i'm so young like yeah look at other sports like 24 is on the young side so oh, it's yeah. like the peak is 32 maybe even for basketball yeah, like, like and, yeah and and kendama isn't necessarily that physical if you take care of your knees it's not like basketball or my knees are chilling my yeah. knees are like my back is manageable it's my yeah. arm and that's and six months ago i was invincible like yeah. you would have told me i was like yeah i'm at the peak of my condition i went to a sports doctor in france in december and she was like yo you're you're good like you don't even need to do anything else like my body could do exactly what i wanted it to do and like but like as soon as i start i started feeling that arm thing i was like shit that's yeah. that that caught up real fast <laughs> that that flipped on me like so fast i was well, like so in terms of like your time spent and practicing and session hard like that peak because of the injury you're not as much anymore uh for no, now that's what it caused like what caused it was it's, how okay. I, I had two six to eight hour days of kanama a week for like wow three to four years and then before that like when i was 18 dropped out of college i was i had like maybe five or six days of like six hour days a week wow so, so i really re long-term wrecked myself yeah. without and like i've talked to a lot of people about this and like when I'm at the sesh, when I'm at events, I never am not playing. And like, I yeah. don't realize it, but I'm always playing. Yeah. I never sit down. 
like when I'm at the sesh here in the park, like with the guys, I never stop playing. So it's like I'm I'm not following the right kind of rhythm that you need to like maintain yourself for this. So it's like yeah, I've yeah. I've needed to like totally reorganize the way I like play Kanama. So it's it's really interesting. And it's like it's bound to happen. You, there's injuries in every sport, but this was just the first one for me. So it's like, it's it's the I think it's a hump that I just have to go over. But I have EKC, so it's like I don't. Yeah, even, you're busy. Yeah, I don't. It's not something I'm obsessing about. I'm like yeah. I have all these enterprise and like my work with Grain Theory is still like valuable to Jake because I do like a lot for the company. Um, in other ways than just playing Kanama. Like I represent the company, like when I'm going to events, people look at me and like talk to me and like they know what I represent. And like yeah. that that helps my image and like GT's image by proxy. So it's like, I'm not going to have trouble selling my Kanama. Yeah. Like people so are the, gonna the way that you caught up to be a very influential and a top player, it was the time that you put in. You think? There was so much time. Yeah, I I can definitely say that. And then investment, because I invested my time, but also my like, dude, my money. Like I yeah. went to, like every single Kanama event I could go to. I've been to like over a hundred like Kanama events and meetups in yeah. the last five or six years. So it's like, it's about being there. Like yeah. of course it's about putting time in, and of course this is like I'm maybe taking this for granted because not everyone can do that. But it's like, I definitely feel like I put aside a bunch of stuff in my life. I dropped out of school. I'm not holding like a job that's like consistent. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm working everything around Kandama. Not everyone can do that. But it's yeah. like, um, it's about being there and about putting time in. So it's like... Are you excited to start grinding again? Um, after when I'm cases? good? Yeah, uh, I'm not thinking that far ahead. But yeah, I do want to grind like i do miss it. and i'm still grind i still i go play once a week now for six okay. hours so I've, oh, I've yeah? okay now. yeah tomorrow i'm seshing at the park for wait so i feel like um i'd usually do an hour or two a day um, i don't do that at all so yeah but like don't you get super tired like mid-session no, you, you're good to go like for six hours no, a day no i don't get tired for that session okay. I, I i'll sesh like 20 to 30 minutes a day maybe at home like okay. just like if if me and my watching TV or like she's working or like I have like a moment during the day where I'm not doing anything, I'll sesh for like 20, 30 minutes. If I have a trick list, that helps. Yeah. I like going through trick lists. I not even necessarily to do good at the, the comp, like for like but I do love a trick list. It's just so much fun. It's but you have those big sessions from like twelve to six PM. That, more even <laughs> we're like two two to 10 p.m or something okay yeah really crazy like yeah and then uh, during that time i'm like non-stop playing with the homies like we'll yeah. do one up, we'll do 10 just playing we'll, the entire time yeah we'll we'll sesh together like when i'm talking to someone i'm seshing when uh like and then sometimes like i haven't been filming as much recently but i'm trying i i posted two tricks this month which was huge for me and like I know I'm gonna have edits coming because GT has like a huge haul of kendamas coming because we've been like we sold out of everything and there's like every time I don't know if it's the same for you and Lotus but it's like all our kendamas like come onto us at once and I receive this yeah. package with like ten new models of kendama and I'm like yeah. whoa holy shit and then that yeah. that that kickstarts me I'm like yeah, damn I got yeah. some stuff. Nothing like a new Dama and a new shape to get yeah, you going. So many shapes. We have like six shapes. Yeah. It's like outrageous. We have the Beta, the TF, the um, GT2, the BH2, the uh, Adrian Esteban. No, we have five shapes then right now. So it's like, <laughs> it's like every time I get like a new new batch of Kanamas, there's like five different shapes. Yeah. This, yeah, wait a second. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, this new batch of Kanamas, all five shapes are oh, coming. Oh, wow. All right, cool. Once. Like, and of course, like, it's going to be, like, it's a big order. So there's, like, a bunch of different stuff being released later. But I can tell you already now, there's, like, a bunch of different stuff dropping in everyone's shapes. And it's so, so sick to have that, like, stimulation of, like, always picking up something different and then yeah. coming back to it. 
but obviously i still play my shape the most because it's the best yeah yeah i have to say that i'm con contractually yeah <laughs> yeah right. um, um but it is, it is old now it's three years old dude your shape yeah it's, it's yeah it's over three years old it, yeah that's, i don't know if it's old now by kanama standards i feel like shapes now the renewal of shapes is slower than it used to be i feel like before like for a while like shapes were dropping like this like chrome were dropping like stuff yeah that, was that the september that fall where it was like fall. it was crazy. Yeah, crazy and then like if you look at like the sweets progression from like let's say from when i'm really familiar with it from when the oh my god i the prime yeah. shape yeah Prime shape is like 2017, maybe beginning of the year. Boost shape is 2018. Yeah. Amp shape is 2021. Oh, yeah. So it's like you go two to three years, and then like Soul has had the the longest running shape of, I think like 2019. <laughs> Me Soul dropped the one up, and then Lotus came out with our company at NAKO 2019. Is it is that one? It was what was the first Kanama that they dropped it on the Liam mod? Yeah, exactly. The rock. I was just talking with Stad about this. Yeah, yeah. So that's the longest running Kanama shape I think there is now. Yeah, like possibly with. Yeah, I'm trying to think. No, that Ooh. has to be because the boost was around for three years. This is around for four. I'm close now. Like yeah. where I mean, I'm at free. Like Ben got his BH one in 2017, and he he did the BH two in 2020 in 2020 yeah. so my shape is now older than ben's bh1 was yeah it's, it's kind of crazy yeah. like to think about it that way it's like it's really nuts but yeah i mine is still so solid i yeah. i don't know if you played it much that much i'm so insulted. i need to i know i'm sorry <laughs> kidding i, I we're, we're uh we have a new shit coming out next month so then the oh damn all right yeah. well i don't know what i'm picking from the lotus package to put yeah in. yeah but um we we're just i was just talking to start about about shapes how they uh went from bigger and now i think they're kind of coming back down you know yeah we're, um, we're just refining but yeah for yeah. sure if i think about my new shape i'm not going that much bigger or no. i'm going bigger i'm going bigger on one thing a little bit because i did keep mine like very pro proportional yeah because when i looked at like i like the percentage idea when i looked at like this shape design like yeah. what chrome did it's like yeah. if you're gonna boost one thing because for a while shapes didn't have a head or a tail they were like it made no sense sometimes i was like why is your cup so big and you didn't raise the height yeah, like, yeah. Was crazy and i think soul has it like maxed out like yeah. their big cup is as big as it can be with a 16 centimeter kanama where it's like manageable and like, i mean we're, we're at the same size big cup but 170 or something you know like yeah exactly so that that yeah. that's what made more sense to me but it's like i think there's like that that golden ratio and yeah. once we figure that out we're gonna stick to it but it's like i like my shape because it's like we have the swoop so that's like a, yeah. an element that other companies don't have so th th that stays within our like realm of like that's ours yeah. and like i have like the flat edge on the base cup no one really does it exactly flat yeah and people have been going more towards the flatter bird zone and mine yeah. is like bulbous so that's yeah. also something that's different so it's like i'm happy with like the elements of my shape that are different from others and i want to keep those so yeah. but it's what else what else am I gonna do? But I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to update my shape. I think just making sure that it's all balanced. That's what we really went for. Is just make sure yeah. that it plays well. Like instead of just going to one dimension, you know, just like Marcus was big on like let's just find something that just seshes everything a little bit, no matter what, you know. I definitely was like I, I just don't do slings or like slings that much. So I. Yeah. I think I sort of like, but in my next shape, I might think about it a bit more, you know, but I think it was cheat codes for me. I was spoiled when I did my shape because like I got to go to a facility where within minutes, a new iteration would be pooped oh, out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's cheat code. It's, that's what we need. That's what everyone needs. Yeah. Like, it should like, it would be so great. I had the let's, same thing, but it was like four let's hours. Open a, let's open it was hand turned. Yeah, let's open a research facility. Yeah. Like a Kodama, like, um, like where every, every company can go trial 
Dude, yeah. that would be such a good idea. Like just a, a business where you don't make kendamas, but you're just there for kendama design. Yeah. Companies can hire you. Yeah, um, that's super cool. Yeah, like a kendama. Would be because it's like that's that's a piece of the market that's really like essential. And it was cheat codes. I like first teed my Serato and was like just sitting there. And then Adrian Esteban had to like go through crazy amounts of like <laughs> like testing and it was yeah. crazy he had to do so much and i was just and he was like t are you good do you have everything you need and i was like yeah dude first try like i was like so happy with my stuff but and then during like a whole day i just did the gt2 because they were so busy with adrian's yeah so got the time to like test the gt2 and like yeah but now looking back on it i'm like idiot like i should have taken so much more I'd, i had maybe five iterations of my mod i yeah. now i I, if I would do 20, yeah, like I would yeah. test the most minute, ridiculous thing. Yeah. That, that makes, yeah. Uh, but I'm really happy with what I did in like four days. So, yeah. Like, it's sick. But yeah, I think companies, it would be nice to have like a better platform for shape testing because sending stuff to Hanru is difficult. I think yeah, it for takes people. a long time. Yeah. And it's expensive. Yeah. And people don't realize that. <laughs> they, <laughs> They, they don't realize how uh, stupidly hard it can be. And I've never done that because I've like, I've helped Jake with it, but like from A to Z, like what you've done, yeah. like the company owners have done. I've not done that. Like that's yeah. maybe I, I suggest you talk to Eric from the O about his process. Yeah. He's one of the craziest, like hardworking and like smart working people in the okay. game. Cool. It's really underrated what he does. He's a nut, dude. Yeah. He sources all of his wood. He like drives across like <laughs> countries. Yeah. <laughs> get his wood and like his testing, his like he's so meticulous. Like I think though is like one of the most like like QC, like top, top, top. Ah, like, that's cool. Yeah. He might be the the most obsessive and like incredibly like disciplined person about this. I was but, super fortunate that um I don't know if you know occult kendamas. I know of them. I have one of their kendamas on my shelf, actually. It was the Battle yeah. of the Board. Like yeah. trophy. Jack, uh, he hand turns and um I was able to he he hand turned me our new shape. So like we kind of like your situation, but a lot longer because I don't know, like did you is your machine, your factory, is it a hand turn thing or is no. it CNC? No, it's CNC? Okay. So yeah, with Jack, it, it was like a lot longer and probably more expensive, but it was still so nice no to idea. be there. No, yeah. it, it, that's amazing. It's and it's it's invaluable. I have Valter, aka, and we have a project that I still haven't figured out because I'm so busy with EKC. But I just went to his shop, brought one of my Ken shapes, and was like, "Here, Valter, yeah. like, can you do this?" And he like beasted it out and made that's me so like. Sick. A and then Rod also hand turned me one of my shape. Okay, nice. Yeah, it's but so I nice. I mean, sorry, sorry guys. I still need to post about it because I want to shout them out because they're so good. But it's like yeah. turners are like incredible. Like they're just such good. And I know AJ from Quad is also phenomenal. Yeah, I played like Adrian's like version, like his mod turned by AJ, and it's like indistinguishable. It's like the same. I like um I and it's not like Hanru is this big Walmart corporation, but I love going to like single local small businesses for Kendama. Like it is, it is amazing. It's, it's kind like, of moving to that more, very, which is amazing. But it is important to explore those avenues, and like it's something that we're seeing in every facet of what we do. It's local is important. Yeah, Let, let's go to Hanru. Hanru Isaac. <laughs> you wanna? I I know of a few players who have been actually. Oh, I know. Oh, you meant like, yeah, go there. Dude, I'm so down. I want to I wanna go to Hanrui so badly. You know Hanrui has a pro team? Do they? Yeah. Like, they, they I like at Catch and Flow, we were watching the ads, and all of a sudden, there's a Hanrui ad going, and these there's these guys in Hanrui, like, playing, and, like, they have, like, and they're playing. It's a mystery, you know? And like, they're, oh. playing the, they're playing the shitty Amazon Kendamas. I'm not what? kidding. What? Yeah. I know it's so funny. With all of the Kendamic shapes and companies yeah. and technology that go through that, they're, they're playing that stuff. And it's like, I had no idea who these dudes are. I feel yeah. I want to be on the Hanrui, like, pro team. Hanrui yeah, hit me it'd up. be so cool to go to those more 
um, smaller communities or just they're kind of tighter, you know, like I'm sure China obviously is a big gigantic country, but I, you know, I think in there's like yeah. Hong Kong, like there's a big community, but they're Nicaragua. probably so separated from uh, Japanese American European. It is. Scene. And like there's other places like where there's like the Philippines, Philippines, Australia, there's a little scene. I'm sure it's so weird. We have three Australian players coming to get to. Oh, PC. do you? Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah. We have only like we have two players and then we have Jesse Carter, which I'm also you announcing. Jesse going? Yeah, Jesse's coming. Dude, what? I love, yeah. love Jesse. I don't know yeah. any scooter, but yeah, he's one of those guys I just follow. Like I have like. <laughs> I was I follow one guy in scooter. Or I follow one guy in like tricking, you know, and, and it's like, yeah. Who do you follow in tricking? Ethan Turner, because I, oh, I know really. Him. Yeah. That's interesting. Do you know who else is coming to EKC? Who? LeBron James. It's it's not fully confirmed yet, but Ethan Turner. What, dude? No way. Yeah, I I talked to him before, and and he's I, fucking good at Kendama. Like no one even. I knows I, I work in crazy ways. <laughs> I'm like I'm That's, like obsessed about like. I want the best to be the yeah. See, but not just the best Kanawha players. I want like just people. So I've talked to Ethan a lot because he's in Oslo, um, like right after. And okay. Was, yeah, and he he has a tricking event in Toulouse, and he's trying to like extend this day so we can come to. Dude, Casey. it's so weird that I feel like Kandama... oh, Ethan come. I I still haven't yeah, yeah, convinced yeah. him fully, but he's trying. I know he's trying, but like, please come, Ethan. Um, and it's so because Ben is in here, but yeah. Uh, so I it's so weird that he is um he has so many followers on Instagram, hundred thousand followers. When I feel tricking is a smaller community than Kendama. Maybe I'm biased, but it is. But it's, it's but more, you know what it is. His cool public flips, yeah, right? It's like more understandable. Yeah, like, and and it has parkour yeah. adjacent, and like yeah. a lot of parkour people know like Ethan Turner and Shohei. Yeah. And then um, you just have random ran, randos that like his flip yeah. versus Kendama when it's like he can't really get into this. It's harder to, but if you look at Kendama, who's the person in Kendama that makes Kendama look the best and like most inviting and most natural? It's Bonds. Yeah. Who, who has the most followers in Kendama? Bonds. Bonds, yeah. That's how it is. It's like he. He well, Chandler, was, Shan, uh, Chandler, whatever his name is, I think. Oh, no. a gun, gun flipping dude. <laughs> I'm sure the Euros love that, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were weirded out by it, but I talked <laughs> to the guy, and he's he's obviously a nice guy, but it was that definitely weird one. Yeah, um, he's super nice, but he's a uh, he's a Georgia, iPad, he's from Georgia, you know. I, iPad flipping dude. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah. He he also makes it very like attainable and accessible. Yeah. Because it's a flipping, tricking thing. You know? I don't know if he's a... Yeah, he is a Kanama player. He's good. Uh, he's super fucking good. Six taps and Kanama, shit. He participates in Kanama culture. But then he also has that, like, that flair for, like, yeah. figuring out how people, like, are, like, stimulated and, like, interested in things. So he's good at, like, figuring out that stuff. And he's made viral videos. Yeah. It's not something I'm... When I make content, that's not what i have in mind ever yeah. i make stuff that's like just like um what's the word i'm looking for just uh um, in tune yeah. with kanama yeah it's like i was able to hit the uh tiktok algorithm with solely kandama tricks which is cool but i kind of found the right way to film and i got a lot of views i i have i i think i have one of the most viewed kanama videos on tiktok actually oh really how many Thanks for your account I think you probably you definitely have more. I have to have more. Yeah. You have like probably like like 20, 30 million views in some videos. Um no, I don't think I have that many. I think I have Oh, uh, I'm in the I'm in the ballpark maybe. Right. I don't know. I think I, I've topped at like eight or something. Oh buddy, I'm at seven point five. Okay. Seven point four. Um, okay, you got me. I'm nice. close, yeah. I, is that not hilarious and of course it's a video that i filmed and edited within five minutes yeah. with my like this like to my chest oh uh, yeah 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 and then uh 0. 0.5 and then yeah if you go to the grain fury tiktok which probably people don't know that we have but yeah. was created like if i look at the analytics that video got us like 99 percent of our followers like 
How many? Yeah, yeah you, you got me by like a million, dude. Is that fucking hilarious or what? Because yeah. I've only ever posted like one or two. <laughs> Yeah. and it's so weird but it's but like, I, I, I i'm uh i'm so proud of my like multi-million no, yours are better yeah i've looked at yours and i was like yeah yours are like just this this one is like <laughs> it's that slow-mo clear that's what i tell people if they want to get big on tiktok just have a good slow-mo video and i use you know? i use a track that i guess is not one of those tiktok trending tracks but it's like a track that people know because of something so i used a track that was on gta 5 Oh, and then okay. in the comments, I'm pretty yeah. sure 90% of the comments are like, yo, that's that track from GTA 5. Yeah. And then I have I super weird comments, bro. TikTok is hella weird. I have one comment that just sent me where I was like, what is this comment? Um, I have to find it again. It says, laugh out loud. That stick went super sussy baka mode straight from Among Us. <laughs> that comment got like hella likes and it just makes no sense bro it's like, like the tic tac thing yeah even mean but it's like yeah i've just used tiktok to post free videos for gt and one of them just hit yeah. yeah and then the other one semi hit and then ben's like wall stall trick where he like froze the tama at the spike that yeah. hit five million views or something which right, is sick because yeah. it's not a pov clip and it hit that amount of views so I could probably still push TikTok, but it's so fucking toxic to my mind that I just have it deleted. And I people yeah, are like, right? yeah, people are like, how do you not? How you have so many followers? How do you not stay on? I'm just like, dude, I, I it is the last thing I want to be on. It's yeah, that's how I felt from like maybe the ten minutes I've ever been on that. So app. addicting, I cannot stop fucking swiping. So I just delete it, and then if I want to post something, I download it, post it, delete it, and yeah, that's yeah. that's what I I don't have my own account. I just have posted Great from there. Thank God I've not, I've never been into the, like, I've never gotten, like, pulled into the, the to the cypher, like, just, yeah, right, but no, I mean, it, it does, it, it still gets you that same, like, yo, I posted this to, like, oh, yeah, it's nice, stuff, yeah, but, but it's, like, yeah, I get 50,000, like, more, like, I don't know, just way more appreciation from posting, like, that little high receipts video that got, like, 300 likes or whatever, on the EKC page, because it like it just means so much more. Oh yeah, I mean, dude, when I when I post a oh, stammy stay. juggle like to TikTok and it gets 100k likes or views or whatever, I'm just like, I know these can, like my friends are just like, dude, you're juggling way too much, you know. And, and oh, like, I don't think anyone sees it like I. I yeah, but like all I'm saying is that I get way more value in posting an Instagram banger to the thousand Kanama players that appreciate it versus all these casual normies that don't play kendama that get me a lot yeah, i know, know it's super great but it is it is useful and helpful and like uh key yeah. value even even facebook has its use and value in in kendama yeah. like it's people talk about the fkc like some kind of giant monster and it is in some ways <laughs> not my favorite thing but it is so valuable and important yeah. and like new people players, think, too. Yeah. yeah no not just new players i, I don't really, know I don't know. Whenever I go on there, I have no idea who anybody is. I love F F K. Wait, are you talking F K C? Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, they do influence the Kanama world quite they a do. bit. Yeah, yeah, like I think more than the Instagram like comments and community to some level. Like people are playing Sulab and Serial and stuff like that just because of Facebook. Yeah, like. Because and because they're good products, of course, but as companies, those companies didn't like their community outreach and their Instagram yeah. like presence and like overall image were not what made them like so prevalent. It is a hundred percent like the Facebook like community and yeah. like support that they get from there and the support people give each other, mm. and that has value. And it's like I, I do feel like sometimes other companies like could learn from that. Yeah. Like, and there could benefit from that because like Sulab and um, Serial are not the companies that are sponsoring our events to the highest tier. And it's like, I would love to see them do that. Like I've mm. repeated it many times to them. I, I think there's such a value to what they've done that they, they, they should like be, like putting it back into like these in-person yeah. events and like start like i mean yeah i i i think their products are some of the best though like the sulap paint is incredible like yeah. i just 
objectively it's very good but like it doesn't make me want to play it like rhino clear does or like the o rubber does because mm. i don't i don't get the same kick in in like watching their videos or like it's just like a personal thing but it's like i i really i really do think that there's an extra value that they can add to the community outside of facebook like for real yeah. like a huge because it's just so funny how fkc is so siloed from the other parts of the economic community like instagram it, can, and F- but it should not like, it shouldn't no but it is when i go on there it's a completely different conversation com- different community different people but it is a conversation because on instagram there is no conversation no it's true yeah there's yeah, no, and there's no like, replies and yeah, we don't yeah. down spike down spike died yeah because the people who were running it were not involved into the other stuff of the community yeah they were like and they were like getting on with their lives yeah and then that was and then but facebook is the only like forum based like thing and like that forum like format is like so um attractive to people still mm. to a group of people not to everyone but it's like so it it definitely has its place and instagram just can't nurture that the same way that facebook can just because of the the whole um yeah. platform so it's i i'm i'm like i'm an advocate for the like remembering the importance of the facebook economic community i'm not like a huge fan of the whole thing but i really like people need to just not like discard it like completely yeah. because it has so much importance it does. yeah i agree and like, discord is huge guys go on to the ekc and yeah, we have uh, 210 discord. people on discord now. yeah and they talk about in-depth stuff about these interviews, which is incredible, like actual big conversations, which I didn't realize, this is kind of your point, I didn't realize I was missing from Instagram, but I totally am. Like if it's- In some ways we are. And it's like, that's why in, in person is the best because you get that yeah. in person. Yo, that's, yeah, yeah. Guys, like as good as all of these things are, like in person is still by far- you got to go in person. You, yeah. you can't get the same value online yeah. that you can get from in person. And of course- some people have like social anxiety. Some people have can't like, afford it, right? Yeah, can't yeah. afford it. Like, some people just can't get put the time aside. But it's like if if you just if you go to one of these things, you will see like the value of it, and it will give you more perspective because you'll have experienced something new. So yeah, yeah. What a cool segue into the, <laughs> the yeah the media and Facebook world of Kanama. But it's something I like. Yeah, every single facet of Kanama interests us is yeah. like we're involved so that's that's cool to talk about it what else yeah. did we talk about because i sent you a list of things we have the maybe the leon 25 was interesting yeah talk about that if you have any questions um no i just thought it was super special you know like it's uh yeah like you know if you're gonna be doing the leon 25 with for kendama i just i i was when I saw you at the steps for the first time, I'm like, what is he going to do down it? And it was a fucking hard, crazy trick. It wasn't like... Yeah, like, thank God. I didn't do turns. much. <laughs> Dude, yeah. we talked about it. We were like, it needs to be hard enough that even the most honed canal player in the world is going to be like, fuck, that's fucked up. How long like, did it take to do that? How long were you there for? An hour. Okay. With no prior training. I never... The people think I talked, I jokingly was like, we were going to make like this reel of like me, like training on a Stairmaster and like of me, like going down different types of steps and like measuring the steps and like yeah. looking at my string length and stuff like that. Um, I had the shittiest string, bro. And if you look at the, if you look at the face, like angle, you can see how much wind there was. I don't yeah. know if you've seen the second angle for that trick. There's a crazy amount of wind on that second angle. You can see it like that day was really windy, but it's like that. What the sick part of that was that it it felt like a kanama trick, but it didn't because we had to scope out the spot. We had to make sure like we could go down because security had kicked us out already a mm. day like one of the previous days. We had to make sure the the conditions were good. They weren't, but we decided that we had to send it anyway. And like every single try, I was like, "Damn, this is my last try." I'm going to get kicked out. So I had like this pressure. And then when you step on that staircase, I, I'm not a religious dude, not a spiritual dude, but like <laughs> I've rarely felt such like importance stepping yeah. 
on something, being in a play. Of course, when you get to cup, you step on that stage. It's important. But this this felt like nothing I'd ever like so done. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. And it's like, yeah, as you said, the trick was hard. Like, I don't think anyone's like, of course, a bunch of people can do it. But I don't think anyone's done 25 tap jokes in the background. <laughs> But it's a good segue to form because you have a very consistent, slow, big style of play. And I know that I, when I, when I, when I can tell when you play that you have put a lot of work into string control, might have maybe not consciously, but oh. what have you learned <laughs> along the way of like getting consistent and not getting the string in the way? No, oh, like the specifics? Yeah, specifics. Yeah. That's, that, that's, I think it's, an untangible like mechanic you can't even speak it yeah, yeah i yeah. don't think it is in kanama like of course there's there's some have you ever seen these clips of stod i don't know if you talked about this with him no he, like does a lighthouse like insta and like grabs the the tama and then wraps around and then keeps jugging. have you ever seen a clip of this i haven't uh, i i do know a clip where i don't know if it's for flair if it's for show but he has done this in the past where you just see him like circle <laughs> like on this plane and and then it look uh, supposedly he's like moving the string around to a different way yeah hit him up about this oh uh, that's really cool i love form you know and uh well, i know bud i i love form but <laughs> it's just such a difficult thing to talk about and yeah. like substantiate like how like how many like tangible factors are there to like the form of a tap, the form of a trick. So it's cool that you're exploring it because it's something that I just do and not, I haven't Think really about, thought yeah. about mechanics, no. But my, I know my Tama control is pretty good. Like yeah, if I look yeah. at some of my clips, I'm like, like I can do like the other day I did 10 juggle ghost on fast in a row, like first try yeah. from Spike. And I was like, that would have never been possible two, three years ago. Yeah. Um, Your tap, how how many how many how many times have you tapped the kendama? Oh, like you, my tap record? Yeah. That's embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it. Six. No, it's eight, but it's it's. I did it five years ago. <laughs> oh, really? And I don't want to talk about it with you because how old are you? Uh, I'm 28. Yeah. What's your tap record? Seven. Yeah, no, okay. I, I almost I get eight. About, I can get I, I'll probably get eight. Like I'm super close. You're, yeah, because I want to be oldest 10 tap, but I haven't put the time into oh, it. Oh yeah. I'm I'm uh, grinding right now. So no, get away, because I can never pass you until you die. And then, <laughs> and then I have to be like 90. Like you just kill me. I don't know. EKC. Because I want to be oldest 10 poison me. Yeah. Even for a minute. Oh, dude, I'm not. Not that that nefarious. I don't, I don't know. It's it. ten tap. It's a big deal. I know. I, I do care about it, but like, <laughs> is right now. I think Stod's record was like nine. Oh shit! I even think about that today. I, I'm a, I'm a young guy. I look young. I I feel young. I didn't get armpit hair until I was 19 years old. So, but Sick. I've been a. Uh, it's kind of cool the fact that I am older, which is crazy to think about because I never thought of myself as older, but. I'm you older are. in the community, and I'm I'm uh I'm in that new gen progression, which usually is a younger thing. You have know? to be like that's sick. You may be one of the oldest people who's in it. Yeah, like um, maybe the oldest. It's it's I both. I guess so. Yeah, sobering and sick. It I won't think. even hit me till I'm thirty. When I hit when I hit thirty, and then I'm oh, like, no, if I hit like t yeah, ten tap at thirty, that would be super cool. Yeah, dude, you're gonna be inspiring all the young yeah. old guys like me you know well like, i'm in my 20s 25. yeah no it's it's a good dude, i hate it though it sucks i know but you should yeah i don't 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 worry about it alex yeah. started kendama when he was like 38 roush right not. yeah talk to him at ekc because yeah. he talk to him about this he'll he'll shit on you like yeah, good yeah. Duck guy he is. i love him so much dude he's like he's got the perfect like like oh. measure of like yeah but like of bluntness and like fuck you like you're you're <laughs> cool. like i love it so he'll he'll sit he'll, 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 yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll get you back on track but no i want to be oldest 10 tap for real because yeah. because i think if i hit 10 tap like tomorrow i would be the oldest one yeah well you gotta maybe hit, go for 12 i think i'm part <laughs> of the oldest ones who was like 
who qualified for cup last year. Yeah, like okay. when I got on stage, I was like, damn, these are kids. And they really weren't. Yeah. I think I was the second oldest person to qualify for cup last year. I time. mean, in terms of my mind, I, I have I have no thoughts towards how old I am. I plan to maybe go to cup this year and do as well as I can. And I want to win competitions. And so um, I'll see, I'll, I'll see where it takes me as an old guy, I guess. Have you seen Rod Dama? Yeah. Bro is 21 for like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Like, yeah, you're, that's true. you're fine. Like, Kanama yeah. keeps you young. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I really, I want to be 35 and, and just like, like swaying triple yeah, like triples and, like, and... and like being a child and like, look at Jake, like he's yeah. he just 40 and he's as youthful as anyone I've yeah. ever met in my life. Like even like, yeah, he's, he's more excited about stuff than his kids. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's one of the most like sick qualities you can find in in a person so i wouldn't b- worry about it but yeah just cap off at nine tap please <laughs> yeah. yeah dude yeah. I'm, now you put it now that you know my plan and just you of course because this conversation is <laughs> confidential um yeah. i'm fun. who yeah. who else is gonna hit 10 tap that's older than us or than me um yeah right think about it there's not that many people no i think i'm ben, ben is capable i'm sure of it but I think it's older than Ben, right? What Ben right. is like from ninety five. I'm ninety four. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can you can fuck me. <laughs> Damn! In like one fell swoop. I never would have thought about that until you just gave me that challenge of being. Dude, I hate it. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hit ten tap tomorrow. I'm gonna. Dude, take... what we gotta do now that we have this challenge is gonna be oh. Takuya to Black, the oldest person to tap. You know, and then you'll hit 11, I'll hit 12, I'll hit 13, you know. Yeah, I love that. I, yeah, but you, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want the smoke because I'm looking to, <laughs> have, I'm like, I'm going to take out my, my stod mod. That yeah, is that a good, ta- yeah, I've been using Max Angel, but this new shape, it's been pretty good for taps. Hey, but by yeah. the way, in terms of um tapping, what what have you found shape wise and, and weight wise to be good? Because you're a tap god, you know? Hmm. Okay, maybe like variation. I I I'll take like variation. God, like variation. Yeah, no, but like, yeah, variation okay. tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've done tricks where there's like six taps and each one is different. <laughs> yeah, that's so sick. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I'll take that. Um, I'm gonna say Mike and Nama is the best in the world for that. But why? Um, the flat rim maybe. I'll say why because I've done the tricks on that. <laughs> yeah. But I could do them on any other Kanama, I think. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, you I weigh don't... your setup? No, like, I really don't. But my setups come pretty, like, because when setups come from the factory, the like the US made factory from GT, it's like they're all in the same weight range. So my Kanama will always be in that weight range. But now that I've had the China version of my mod, I've had some with like 74, 75. And I think that have, those have been a bit better for like more taps oh wait um, so your gts are 80 or 70 my the gttf from america would never come under 80 never They're but the factory's all... a little lighter i i think lighter i'll play heavier from the factory as well and my serato is like consistently 10 grams lunar heavy whoa like, consistently I, I, tap... so I i'm sorry but i really haven't I, I have to have touched your mod before but i haven't seshed it hard because i've just been playing lotus you know like but, I think I've weighed over a hundred of my Kanama because I got a batch here once of my Kanama and like they were consistently 10 grams heavier. Holy but shit. My Serato is so fat, dude, but it doesn't look like it because yeah. my mom is like really proportional. It's we call it the slim thick technology. Slim thick, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Like because you don't look at it and you're like, ooh, that's so disproportionate. But if you look at my Serato like this, you're like, okay, yeah, it looks like Serato. And then you turn it like this, where you'd see the top of the can and you're like, oh, Jesus. It's thick. That's thick. Yeah, it's thick on this. Like if you're Do holding you think a t- heavy Serato helps with taps. It helps with lunars, but I'm I'm really yeah, not sure. sure yeah. apps. I don't need <laughs> I I've I've tried I've explored it a I'm, lot and I'm terrible for this because yeah. like I had like eric from the o like homie and like once he had this kanama and like we were like at maiko's place at bko and he just had it 
that he was seshing and he was hating it. And then I come along and I don't know anything about him and hating this Gundam. And I just pick it up and like start shredding. Like yeah. I've, I hit so much crazy stuff within the span of like two, three minutes. And he was looking at me and he was pissed. He was like, do you like that? It's garbage. And it's like, austrian accent which i won't recreate because i can't but i love the way he speaks and and then i was like no dude this this kanam is incredible it's amazing and he looks at it and he was like i hate this thing yeah and like, but like i'm terrible with that because i just don't it doesn't like i don't feel too much change from weights or shape that okay. much like i'll I, of course like at some point like if i pick up an azora and like one of my Kens, of course, I'll I'll see the difference and I'll be like, that's better. But it's like at some at some point, like yeah. within the same shape, like ratio and range, like weights and like small like changes to the shape are not gonna affect me. And like I would play, like my first kendama was under, uh, like a hundred grams total. It was a sassafras and beach, like European stuff. crazy shit. From no, it was from Konami USA. It was a Zach Yord Promod. Oh, okay, okay, nice. And it was like the Tama weighed like fifty. I had grams. no idea it was okay. It had that that light. I never weighed old shit. Yeah, I mean my my first was you like weighed a... old Kendamas, and you're gonna be like, man, I was doing it super dumb, <laughs> playing crazy light stuff like, yeah. and then I was playing like twenty twenty five gram like difference like. Yeah. 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 All right, man, I got to go. Uh, we're going out tonight. Got to go party. You You're going to party tonight? Yeah. That was me Yeah, yesterday a little bit, which I maybe shouldn't have considering I was driving a huge truck all day today. Like, really big truck. Like, geez. But it was really great talking, and I'm excited, excited to see what EKC, dude. Yeah, man, I'm super stoked for EKC to. Yeah, we haven't uh, even told the people. Second and third of June in Leiden, Netherlands. Yeah. I'll slot that in there right now. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's a bit late if you're coming from America. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Like, but still send it. Send I it. don't. The flights aren't more expensive than they were like two months ago. They're just as expensive because they are pretty expensive. Yeah. Nowadays, but send it. And if you're in Europe, you have no excuse. <laughs> yeah. It's you so. Gotta go. It's so incredible. If you like Kendama or if you're not sure about liking Kendama, please come because it will it will change you. Yeah. So I'll see you then. We'll we'll have some more conversations because I remember you you wanted to do a cool thing at, at the event. Yeah. But, the super yeah, cool thing. We'll talk about but, I'm really excited uh, for that still. So yeah, it's definitely talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, a really great talking to you, Isaac. I'm yeah, I'm gonna head to bed soon. It's all right. Fun. Sounds good to you. Good talking, man. Yeah, I'll see you around. All right. Peace. Bye, bud.